All right. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Street Life Ministries podcast. I'm here with a friend of mine, uh, Officer Jesse Castro from the Redwood City Police Department. And uh, just here to talk about uh, Redwood City Police, homeless, community uh, 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 community service outreach uh, with the Redwood City Police Department. So, Jesse, h- how are you doing this morning? You doing good? I'm doing good. How are awesome. you? Awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of this, this of interview course. and uh, podcast that we're starting here. So, first, first off is, how long have you been a police officer? So, I've been a police officer for about 12 years, a little over 12 years. And where did you start out at? So, I started in 2008 with the San, with the San Jose Police Department. Um, and I left there in 2011 and came over here to Redwood City PD. That's so awesome. Yeah. So I have a question to ask. So I, I know I've been hearing a lot of stuff, you know, from other officers. Like I read and watch a lot of different podcasts and stuff. You know, it seems to me from everybody I've watched to be a police officer, it's something that was just in you from a very young kid. Did you, did you know that you wanted to be a police officer from like a very, very little kid? Was that just something that you just felt uh, yes, actually. Um, according to my mom, that's what I wanted to do since I was a young little kid. Um, but growing up, obviously things changed, right? Uh, back in high school, um, I joined the Navy JROTC mm-hmm. and got pushed towards the Navy. I ended up joining the Navy and my mindset was to actually try military police to see if law enforcement was something that I wanted to do. So actually prior to law enforcement, I was actually in the Navy and I was a military police officer for four years. Um, once I finished that, obviously law enforcement was what I wanted to do. I, tra- I transitioned from the military into police work um, and I started there at San Jose PD back in 2008. So did it always feel like this is, this is where I need to be? <sighs> yeah, kind of, sort of. I mean, I liked it. Um, I like the work. I like always having, you know, like every day is a different day. Um, you don't know what's in store. You don't know what that next call is going to be. Um, I like the excitement of being out in the field, talking to people and just getting my hands dirty when I need to. Yeah. It's not an eight to five, huh? Definitely not. (laughs) Especially nowadays with cell phones, it's you're working almost 24 seven. Yeah. No kidding. So when you were in in the San Jose uh, area, now I'm 50 years old. So I remember when San Jose was pretty much just apple orchards and dirt and over the years, it, it's a it's a pretty major city, um, and I know it has its own fair share of like issues with with gangs and homelessness and stuff like that. So more towards like the homeless is is did you do, were you working with homeless uh, back in San Jose as well? I'm I'm I kind of figure you had no real choice, right? I was um, I for the most part I was a patrol officer out there and I was working the midnight shift. Um, so I didn't have too much time to deal with the homeless community. We're busy handling domestic violence calls and stuff like that, but alcohol and and stuff like that plays a huge role with homelessness. So on occasion I would deal with them, um, and have to deal with certain encounters and stuff like that. But we were busy down in San Jose going to call to call to call. So, um, I didn't really get into that role until I came here to Redwood city PD where I got more hands on with the homeless community. Yeah, I was uh, talking to uh, as uh, Albert. Um, he was from Watsonville. That's correct. And he said he says coming from Watsonville to Redwood City was a huge difference because in Watsonville, same thing, call to call to call to call. For sure. You know what I mean? So it's it's I guess it's kind of nice to be in Redwood City in some ways, right? It is. Um, and what's nice about Redwood City, it's 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 a smaller town, right? So you really get to know the community. You get to know the people that are on the street. You get to know the the people that you go continuously to calls for service and stuff like that. And you get to build a relationship, whether good or bad. Um, but still, um, there's always a face to the name for the most part. And, and same goes for them. They know who the officers are. They know I'm officer Jesse Castro. They know officer Albert Lopez or whoever, right? Um, it's just, it's smaller. It's a smaller knit community, which I think helps us as a whole. Yeah. I I had to say that one of the things, uh, I was born and raised in Redwood city. And one of the things I'd have to say about Redwood city police has always been very interesting. It's like, you know, um, from something as minor as a cat in a tree to um, a bank robbery to uh, somebody just a DUI or whatever, Redwood City Police is like you guys are always present. You know, and I think I think what's nice about that is is people seem to forget like how convenient that is. That no matter how minor the call might be to some people, right? Um, like a lost cat or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, community policing has been something that I've noticed with Redwood City is is always been like top of the list. That was one adjustment that I really had to make coming from San Jose to Redwood City. Um, just, you're right. 
no call is too small because it really isn't. And even till this day, even with all like all the COVID restrictions and, and all the the precautions that we take to make sure that, you know, we don't get sick and stuff like that. We still, for the most part, go to just about every single call. It, I think that type of service really helps build the relationship between the community and the police department. You know, it's kind of interesting. So to kind of go into that, the whole COVID thing, how, how, how would you say as, so because you're a community policing officer now, and I know that you filter through a lot of the next door and Facebook and mm-hmm. a lot of the phone calls. And um, thank you for that. Because I'm sure that's not an easy task in a lot of ways. Because there's, you know, you're dealing <laughs> with a lot. You're dealing with a, uh, you know, what a hundred thousand, sixty thousand, you know, different personalities. For sure. So I mean, I know that's not easy. I work with a homeless community of, of about two to three hundred, and I know those personalities um, could be very different from one to the next. But so how how uh, how has COVID um, kind of changed the police department or like community policing? How has that been? So initially, so we've been in the COVID mode since March, right? And back in March, we didn't know anything about COVID and we were fearing for the worst, right? Right. We were, we had steps in place in case, you know, 20% of the department would go out, 40% of the department would go out and stuff like that. And, And honestly, our administration did a great job preparing us for the worst case scenario. That was March. We're now in October. And, and it's sad to say because we've kind of grown used to it. Um, mm. And we, we, you know, we're used to our face masks now. We're used to operating, um, you know, the way that we do nowadays. Um, and it's honestly become almost second nature to us. It's, it's the new normal, so to speak. Yeah, which is kind um, of sad. But that's the thing with police work. It's always changing. Every single year we get new laws um, that we have to adapt to. We have to change our, our tactics or the way that we operate. COVID was, think of it as a law. We just adapted, we changed, and here we are. Yeah, that's one thing about your job is is having to always constantly be flexible. For sure. It's almost it's almost like the changing of a season for you guys could be from one shift to the next. That's right. So it's it's pretty interesting. Um, have you noticed uh, through the coronavirus or the COVID coronavirus, however, whatever you call it, um, uh, have you guys noticed more domestic violence calls, more um, suicide calls, more of that kind of stuff? Have you seen that increase? I don't know the specifics. I, I didn't run the stats, to be honest with you. I can tell you, though, that me being on the street and working with the homeless community, I have seen the homeless community grow here in Redwood City. Yeah. Um, it seems like more homeless, um, you know, they're either out of the jails, um, they're on the streets, and it could be because they lost their housing or whatever the case is. But I almost feel that the homeless community here in Robo City has either doubled, if not tripled, since uh, COVID started. Yeah, so that's a, that's a pretty good transition right there. So going into the homeless, that's how you and I became friends and started getting together because uh, you took over a position that somebody else held and now you're the community policing officer, and which has been a great transition. I've, I've, I've been blessed to work with you and be a um, part of uh, several different meetings with uh, Fair Oaks, Terry Chin, and the Safe Parking Initiative and, mm-hmm. and stuff. It's interesting how like as soon as you came into your role, it was kind of like drinking from a fire hose, and then all of a sudden the COVID hit, and it was like a whole nother fire hose, right? <laughs> um, and like you said, the increase. I feel like for myself, I, I uh, from my office to downtown Redwood City is literally six or seven blocks, and I'm now seeing, I don't know, maybe a, a half a dozen, if not a dozen, new faces every day that I've never seen before. I feel like my outreach has increased immensely just by these new faces that I'm seeing. Yes. Um, um, excuse me, um, females, the female homeless has increased quite a bit as well. Um, so going with that, uh, just so really quick. So like I've noticed with the libraries being closed down, the, the coffee shops not operating the same. Um, a lot of the, 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 the fear of, of the coronavirus, which has made our folks, um, a little bit more like, Hey, you can't come in my business and just hang out. Mm -hmm. Um, I've noticed that it's kind of made the homeless community feel even more discarded. And so I'm, I'm seeing a little bit more uptick in um, drug use, um, a little bit more, um, how do I say it? A little bit more um, like in, inner, inner uh, fighting with the homeless community because they don't really have a, a safe place to go all day. Have, have you noticed that? Well, it, COVID-19 has really made it difficult for everybody, mm-hmm. right? Um, you're right. When it comes to businesses, for the, you know, a lot of them are open. Restaurants, for example, they're open. However, you can't go in, 
right? So the restrooms are no longer in service. You can't go in there just to grab a quick glass of water if you wanted to and, and stuff like that. So that in itself created a challenge for the homeless community, right? They used to have a spot where they can use a restroom where they can, you know, grab a quick bite to eat or whatever the case is. But those options are now gone. Yeah. The one thing that has happened was, uh, you know, the city of Redwood City did put out some rest, some portable restrooms out there for them, some hand washing stations and right. stuff like that. A lot of community members, I know yourself, um, life moves. There's people from the community that are out there constantly, um, you know, making contact with the homeless folks and, and helping them in any which way that they can. Um, and, and I think that's huge because yes, they're, the homeless community is concerned whether, and, and I don't know if that concern has really increased drug use or, or whatever, but they're human beings just like us. Mm -hmm. They have concerns, they're afraid of this virus, they're afraid of going into shelter, they're afraid of, you know, what happens to me if I get it? I've heard all those stories, and, and honestly, I just go out there and I tell them what I know, and, and I know you do the same. You go out there and you educate them with what you know, what's going on, what you're hearing, and stuff like that. And, and I think one of the big struggles with the homeless community is that they don't have as much access to information as maybe you and I do. Um, so it's very important for us, for everybody else, Life Moves and, and the Ferrox Community Center, all the big group going out there and really talking to these folks is really important to educate them and let them know what's going on so that they feel that there's at least a little bit of support for them out there. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that you said that because uh, Saturday, my, my wife and, and a friend of ours, another outreach person, uh, Tom Shrum, mm -hmm. we were out doing outreach and we were, we were handing out, um, we went to the sandwich spot and uh, David, sells us um, like half made sandwiches all the time. So we go out there and do outreach with them and we're out there and just some lady just pulls up at the, at the corridor over on veterans area. Mm -hmm. She just pulls up and she gets out of her, uh, her SUV and she unloads uh, two cases of water and she just, she walks right by us with these two cases of water and she just drops them off and gets in her car and leaves. And I, uh, I looked over at, at one of the guys there at the campsite and I said, who is that? And he goes, I, she goes, we don't know. She just, you know, the last couple months, she's just been coming by every every weekend, dropping off two cases of water to us. Yeah. And I just thought to myself, you know, that's, to me, that's part of Redwood City. That's that's a, it's a warm side of Redwood City that you see. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to see that there's just community people. She didn't hardly say two words. She just came in and dropped the water off. And, you know, it doesn't want any recognition, didn't, wasn't in uh, wanting to stop and talk to anybody, just was doing her thing. And. I have to say I've seen that a lot in Redwood City, oh, yeah. which has been really uh, pretty cool. Um, so, you know, I think some of the things, too, that people are asking questions about, like we were just talking before we started recording, was um, some of the RVs. And you and I have sat in months and months of discussion on safe parking. So why don't you just maybe if you can just let some people know about, like, what's this new safe parking initiative and how is that helping are folks that are tentatively homeless but housed in their RVs, and how is it helping um, some of the concerns with some of the business owners and stuff? For sure. So um, recently, the city um, allowed for a safe parking program to to start here in the city. Uh, Terry Chen with the Fairoaks Community Center basically spearheaded the project, and she's done a phenomenal job. Um, now it's fully operational. Uh, Life Moves is managing the whole site. And in essence, what it is, it's a safe parking location located right across the street from the Redwood City Police Department, um, where people that live in RVs can sign up for this program, have a safe location to park, there's portable restrooms, there's a social worker there, there's security on site and stuff like that. Um, but it's in essence, a safe location for them to park with the bottom line of this whole agreement is to get them from an RV into a permanent housing situation. So that's the overall goal of the whole of the program. Um, there's a lot of rules and stuff that people have to follow. Of course, um, you know, they have to have driver's license, they have to have insurance registration and stuff like that. But life moves and that team there that's overseeing the whole project is really focused on getting them to transition from, like I said, an RV to a more permanent situation. So that in itself is huge. It's a centralized location where people can, can get help. It also helps, you know, the business community that's um, that has been affected by the RV community because I think at one point we had over a hundred RVs um, and and business owners. You know, they have a business to run and stuff like that too. Um, the good thing that I can say about Redwood City is that the business owners 
as much as you know they they want business right they're also compassionate and they understand that we have to look at uh both sides of things right we, let's help them but at the same time let's help the business and and the city as a whole has worked to make this happen so that business owners are happy people living in the rvs are happy and at the end of the day we're taking taking care of everybody so honestly in my opinion i think it's a great program i think it's really going to help the city overall uh and i'm Terry Chan, honestly, she, she deserves all the credit in the world for that program because she put a lot of work into it. And I think it's going to help, like I said, the city overall, um, help everybody in the city overall. Street Life Ministries is able to serve 40,000 meals and help around 20 people permanently get off the streets every year because of our amazing volunteers and donors. And these numbers are great, but we feel... God is calling us to do more. In one year, we want to double these numbers. And if we get enough donations, we can make it happen. So, if you are not a monthly donor yet, maybe now is the time to start. It feels pretty great being a part of this powerful movement. Just go to streetlifeministries.org and click donate. Again, that is streetlifeministries.org, and you click donate. Now let's get back to the show. So what would you see? Because I, I know you get tons of these from Nextdoor and Facebook. Mm -hmm. I, I get co constant uh, hits as well. What do you say to those folks that are saying, well, you know, what what is the city doing f for our folks on the street? Obviously, we talked about the RV and the safe parking. Um, so when they see RVs still parked on the street... What would you say to people that's like, uh, how, how can the community help you help Street Life Ministries, Life Moves? Like what, what, what's some areas that you think is good for the community to put a good foot forward to help out? So honestly, the, the biggest issue that I've had with business owners or community folks or even the people in RVs um, when they're asking about what's going on in the city, the biggest issue that I'm running into is the fact that they don't know what's going on in the city. They don't know how the program is going or what, what step we're at. Um, they don't know what's going to happen you know, in one month or two months or whatever the case is. So what I do is I get on the phone and I have a conversation with these people and I let them know, hey, this is what we're doing. This is where we're at. This is where we're going to be three months from now or whatever the case is. But the big thing is really educating them. And, and having that conversation with them because there a lot of people are upset, but they don't know what we're doing. They don't see us or, or whatever the obstacle is. Um, so I really make it an emphasis to get on the phone, have that conversation, educate them and, and, and be straightforward with them, right? Hey, we need another month or we, you know, we're two months out or whatever the case is. Um, that building, having that transparency with everybody is, is big. I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. And honestly, I think it's helped me really buy us time because, um, you know, it, it's a process. And But here we are now, and I think everybody as a whole, like I said, is is, is pretty happy with the, with the way things are going. Yeah. So as a police officer, right, and, and coming from San Jose into Redwood City, and, and, and obviously, you know, you, you've, you know, you've covered a lot of different positions in your career. And, you know, and now this, this the community policing is just another step in your um in your career as, as being a police officer, right? Yes. Obviously, um, you know, for those people, like I, I get all the time, it's like, well, you know, wh why do you even bother, right? You know, they're just, they're, they just want to be homeless or they're just drug addicts or whatever. Um, you know, how is, how is working with homeless, how, how has it kind of shaped your life? I know it's changed mine dramatically. Like I, I don't look at human life at all the same as I used to. How, how as a police officer who, who in the years of your career, you've seen a lot of negative, right? I'm sure you've seen a lot of positive as well, but sure. from human life, you see a lot of negative. And, and when, and now that you're kind of in the trenches, like on a day-to-day -day basis, working with the homeless, how, how is working with our folks on the street kind of shaped you? And, and what have you seen? So honestly, I've been in this role now since January, where I really was able to focus with the homeless community and, and work with you guys and work with all these partners. Um, the one thing that it's taught me is to really understand the system that we have in place here in Redwood City, where I get to work with yourself, with uh, Life Moves, with everybody that really helps out the homeless community. That's been the biggest take. Um, as a patrol officer, you do that, 
but you you don't have that focus right your focus is handling that next call so me being in this position what i like to do now is i like to give the other officers my knowledge mm-hmm. right i like to educate them i like to tell them that pastor dave will answer his phone at midnight if you really need him to i like to tell them that hey no we can't just grab an encampment and clean it up there's a process right mm-hmm. so it's it's more so i like that i have a good understanding now and that i could I could spread my knowledge to the others there at the police department so that we can work together together to really help everybody else out. And that's really my focal point. Um, and, and I, you know, being a police officer with, with 12 years on, I'm not, I'm not the rookie guy anymore. Right. So mm-hmm. I get to now take my skills and teach those rookie guys how to do it sure. correctly. Sure. Um, and I, I like it. I enjoy it. Um, I understand it now. Um, and it helps me for one, you know, when I'm out there on the street, because I, you know, I, I wasn't just, I haven't been the community police officer forever, right? Prior to this, I was a detective. I did other things. I've worked patrol. I've been a field training officer. So now all these skills that I'm learning, I'm going to push it on to others. Yeah. You know, you know, it's really interesting you say that too, because I, I, I will say, so I've been leading this ministry almost 14 years and it, and it took me maybe about five years, six years into having the Redwood City uh, no, maybe about four years and having the Redwood City uh, Street Life Ministries launched for me to really kind of get like a foot into the door with the Redwood City Police Department. And mm-hmm. that all kind of started with uh, Bill Cogno and um, and then uh, Gav- Gav- Gamez. Yes, Chief and Gamez. Chief, Chief Gamez and then Chief Mulholland. And, um, and what ended up happening was, is and I don't really know exactly how that transpired, but I know that uh, uh, Bill Cogno was the beginning stages of the downtown street unit. And so he attached himself to me and then he actually kind of introduced me to all of you guys and then next thing I know this door opened up but what I've realized with the the community policing that's been uh, a huge help for us is that because you're in a position where you actually get to go out to the campsites Mm -hmm. and you're not in a rush you're not going from call to call to call and you're actually able to spend a half hour 40 minutes with a with our folks right so you're building trust right because our folks are very untrusting right especially you know un, you know it's, it's a sad thing but when you show up with the uniform right the, their first impression is like oh run <laughs> right um but because now that there's this bridge that's been built between you guys with life moves with uh, downtown streets team street life ministries and uh, uh mental health um i think they actually really see you guys and focus on you guys as more of like you care right for sure and and that's one thing that i you know i mentioned earlier where here in redwood city <clears throat> me or any other police officer, we have that connection with, with the homeless community because they see us all the time, right? So, um, you know, we start building that respect. We start building that trust. And it's not just me. This is citywide. A lot, I mean, we, we deal with the same homeless folks over and over and over again, right? And, 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 and that's where you start building that trust. We don't always arrest them. We don't always, um, you know you know, do any type of enforcement or whatever. It's yeah. every situation, every contact is different. Sometimes all we're doing is just telling them, um, you know, what we're doing, why we're there, giving them water or whatever the case is. And honestly, our, our bottom goal is to get them off the street. Yeah. So our officers are skilled up. They're trained up. They know what they're, what tools we have available. They know who they can call for help. They know they could call you. They know the process with Fair Oaks Community Center. They know, you know, life moves. They know all these resources that we have. We're all, in essence, um, out there doing um, doing outreach every single contact because our goal is if we could get them off the street, it's gonna help everyone. It's gonna help them. It's gonna help our community. And, and it's one less issue that we have to deal with. Yeah, I've been out with you. I've been out with Bill Cogno. I've been out with a couple of other officers in the, in the last several years where we've gone to campsites as an outreach. And I, I as a pastor, right? So we're kind of going together like this mm-hmm. this, this uh, team, right? And we go out. And there's been times where I've actually have seen things where, you know, I mean, if, if you're with somebody who wants to be kind of a hard nose, I mean, they're, they're definitely arrestable offenses. And yeah. I've seen officers go, hey, look, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here because I want to introduce you to Pastor Dave and I want to let you know that we want to see you have a better life. And when I've seen that, I, I've actually been witness to that. And what I've seen is, is that they're like, oh my gosh, like 
it's not all about like the, the arrest. Yeah. It, it, they do care. And, and, and it's not like it's a one-time thing. This has been something that's been kind of repeated throughout a lot of officers that could literally go out and, and arrest tons of people all day long. But they've said, hey, look, that's not what I'm here for. You know, here they've given my card out. I've gotten phone calls and referrals from people that have shown up for dinner because a Redwood City police officer gave them my card. So yeah. I, I I say that because thank you because that's actually been um, kind of a, a, a an easier road for us. I think all around mm-hmm. to see that. Um, but I also wanted to ask you, like, has, has there have you been um, out on the street where you've seen like a success? Have you seen something where you? kind of uh, called either Street Life or Life Moves or Mental Health or just all of us and, and you've watched somebody's life transform? It happens all the time, actually. Yeah. Um, between your help, between Life Moves, Fair Oaks, everybody, all the partners, um, I've, I've seen it. Just last week, I was sent a picture of um, a subject that I've been dealing with. He was probably one of the first that I that I really met when I started. I won't say his name, but I'll tell you where he was kind of at. Um, he was hanging out there by the Kmart right there on um, on Walnut and I met him when I first got into the program as community policing officer and his first comment to me not his first but one of our first conversation he basically told me no why why would I get a job when I get everything free um, <laughs> and I was like well you know we had that conversation and one thing led to another anyways um, that was back in January last week I got a photo fo- I was sent a photograph of him signing his his lease agreement for um, a studio apartment that he got. That's awesome. So, you know, and, and during that time, I probably had at least 50 contacts with him, you know, casual conversations. Hey, how are things going? Hey, are you ready to get off the street? Are you ready to transition and, and stuff like that? And, you know, sometimes he would tell me yes. Other times he would tell me no. Um, but last week, looks like he finally said yes, and he's now off the street. So, um, and this happens all the time. Um, I hear success stories from you. Uh, I hear success success stories from uh, Life Moves. It happens all the time. This is what you guys are here to do. Um, and I really, us as a police department, we put a lot of weight on your guys' shoulders because you guys are the ones that are going out there taking them to look at apartments, or at studios, to, to get their um, IDs if they need them or whatever. You guys are making stuff happen. I don't have time to do that stuff, but this is where I rely on the support from you guys to make that happen and, and you guys follow through every single time. So, so the partnership, <laughs> the partnership is, is, is incredible. Honestly. Um, I don't, I can't speak for every single department. I could speak, um, to a little bit of San Jose and then what I've seen here and then our neighboring cities. And honestly, I think the partnership that we have here is probably, uh, probably the best that around, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I, I will say, I mean, I know I'm, pretty biased i'm born and raised in redwood city but i think redwood city (laughs) police department is like by far the best police department anywhere i've ever seen um but like i said i'm pretty biased for for the most part but i think overall overall from the 13 years i've been doing this i i I go to the east bay a lot i go to santa clara county a lot and i would have to say that san mateo county is probably number one when it comes to uh Coming together as a community, I think I think San Jose and Santa Clara County is is doing a great job mm-hmm. uh, stepping up. I mean, they they have a, a definitely a lot more territory. I mean, I go to San Jose and it's it's unbelievable that the campsites because it, it's so spread out. It's it's yeah. a valley, right? So it's 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 a huge problem um, to 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 deal with because you you just never know where where it's going to end because it's all over the place. I yeah. think San Mateo County is pretty big. I've I've noticed that the the coast side is getting um, inundated with our folks on the street and the sheriff's department is actually trying to do their job to the same thing. They've, they've been calling us a, a quite a bit, you know, they have the PERT program and yeah. they do a lot of, uh, different, um, uh, things, but as, as we kind of get ready to kind of close up here, you know, I, um, I know that I, especially with the podcast and our Facebook stuff, I, I always uh, kind of jump on social media when I hear people, you know, um, you know, the, the, the not in my backyard comments. Right. And so I always just, Put our website out there. Say, hey, listen. You know, if you, you know, if you, if you want to be a part of the, the the solution to it, you know, you can always sign up to volunteer or cook or drive or even, you know, even if you want to come out with me and do outreach, we're more than willing to let people come with us into campsites and stuff like that. And you know, and that's a little bit more. I'm a little bit more safeguarded with that, but I, I'm more than willing to let people come out because I've realized over the years that the folks that we're working with, 
they're like, that's like my brother. That's my uncle. That's my grandfather. I mean, yeah. you get to know these people intimately and personal and you realize like th nobody's, they're no different. They're just stuck, you know? And, and, um, so what would you say to like people in Redwood city where you filter through a lot of the, your communications, um, that are just, they're frustrated or they're saying just, you know, end this, just get it out of my, my city. What would, what are some things that you could say to people that are feeling that way? So the homeless problem in Redwood city, guess what? It's not a Redwood city problem. This, the homeless problem is a problem statewide, mm -hmm. right? Um, the one big thing I would say to anybody in the community in Redwood city is if you don't know before you start getting all frustrated and, and start, you know, um, spreading false rumors or whatever the case is, call us, talk to us and ask us questions of what exactly is going on. I'll tell you what the issues are. I'll tell you what we're doing, why we can't do this, why we can do this or whatever the case is. Um, you know, our, our hands are sometimes tied and that's the reality of the situation. But why? I could tell you that, mm -hmm. you know, just ask. I, I'm, I'm straight up with everybody. I don't sugarcoat anything. I, I tell people like it is. Um, and that's, that's my, my motto and I think it's worked for me very well. So just communicate with us. Come and learn why we do what we do. Come learn why Pastor Dave does why he do, <laughs> what he does, uh, when he does it and all that stuff, right? We're, we're, we're all here to help. We're all here to educate um, and maybe go talk to one of these guys on the street and they'll tell you why they landed in that position or or why they're stuck in that position, why um, you know they can't transition and get housing and stuff like that. There's always an obstacle, um, but they could overcome those too. And that's where we come into play and try to help them out. So just ask. Honestly, that's my biggest thing. If you have any questions or concerns, ask. Talk to the people that are out there um, you know, walking the streets. We know what's up. We know what's going on. Um, and we'll all be straight up with you. Yeah. You know, um, with our, with closing here, you know, I will, I will completely agree with you. It's, it's interesting. I've had more people from my church and other people from the community call me or email me about, Oh, there's this guy over at Safeway Sequoia station, or there's this guy over by uh, a sports basement or mm -hmm. whatever. And I, and I feel so bad. I don't know what to do. And is there anybody doing anything? And I know these people personally, like you do, right? We, yeah. we, we know our folks personally, right? And I could rattle off, oh yeah, he's, he's connected to Life Moves. He's, and he's already got a voucher working on housing mm -hmm. or he's, he's attached to mental health. Yes, we're taking care of him. He's, we give him clothes and we take care of him. And, and I've noticed that the tone of the conversation sometimes might start off kind of like, in the beginning might start off kind of like, I just either they're help, they want to help or they just want the person to go away. But then after the conversation, they realize, wow, the, the, there's so much wrapped around this one person yep. and people just don't know. And so I, I encourage the same thing. Just call, ask, just tell me who it is or what the person looks like in the area that they're standing in. And I guarantee you that they're, they've got services wrapped around them and that you just don't know. hundred percent. And in this city, I'll speak for Redwood city. There is not one homeless subject that we have not done any type of outreach with or anything or helped in one way or another. That's how aggressive we are here in this city, whether it's you, me, Life Moves, whoever. We're going out there. We're trying to help this person in one way, shape or form. Right. Um, it's a process, you know, getting them off the street into shelter or getting them off the street into you know, permanent housing or whatever, it's a process. Sometimes it can move quickly. Sometimes it could take a couple months. Mm -hmm. um, and, and unfortunately, when it does take a couple months, yeah, you're, you're probably continuously going to see them on the street, but it's not to say that nothing's being done. Just like you said, there's, there's probably a bunch of stuff that has happened in between, and it's just a matter of time before hopefully we get that final positive result of getting that transition from the street to permanent housing. Um, like I said, sometimes it could happen very quickly. Sometimes it takes a while, but I can assure you that here in Redwood City, we know who they are. We're trying to help one way or another, whether they want to receive the help or not, we're still going to do what we do and, and try to help them out. Cool. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming here and, and giving me your time. For sure. uh, from my family to you and from folks that I know that are going to see this, uh, thank you guys uh, for Redwood City Police Department and for all you guys do to keep us safe and continue to work on the streets and help with the community outreach and stuff. I, we really appreciate you guys a lot. And, and I just uh, I want people to know that um, there's a lot that's being done. 
through the River City Police Department, through the Sheriff's Department, through Life Moves, Fair Oaks. I mean, there's so much. But thank you personally for everything you guys do. Thank you for having me. And you know you could always count on us for anything you need. Yeah, right on. Thanks, Jesse. All right.